Well, you know what time it is? It is time to take this box fishing in a pond. Too much stuff going on. Let's go fishing. What do you think? It's been a little stressful the last month with all this bass fishing stuff going on, right? So we're going to take this box right here. We're going to go out to a local pond and, uh, and see what happens. There's some cool stuff in this box, I'm sure. And uh, hopefully I'm going to catch some fish. So come join me. Let's go fishing. Well, I'm excited about today. You know, it's not too often I get a chance to just go fun fishing. Just go hang out and try things. You know, I think back to some of the very first fish I ever caught were obviously around a pond. So anytime I can go out and just walk around the banks and pond fish, that's a good day. So I'm excited about taking these lures in this box and seeing what, um, seeing what we can come up with. Give you a few tips on how to fish around the shoreline. Give you a few tips on how to rig the baits. Give you a few tips on how to fish them, what kind of conditions, etc. It's gonna be good. I hope we catch a big one. Alright, let's see what we're gonna listen to the jam out before we get to the pond. Ah. Maybe that's good. been a little while it's been a little while since I've fished out there in that pond it's a good pond I've caught some nice fish out here some seven and eight pounders uh, it looks a little muddy so that could be a problem it's real muddy actually normally there's grass in this lake hydrilla and stuff keeps it real clean and clear but it's looking a little milky I don't see much grass so they might have sprayed it or something to get rid of the grass Rule number one, when you're fishing someone's farm pond, close the gate. Rule number two, don't run over a cow. Pretty much get your permission yanked to kill a cow or leave a gate open. So, what's up, buddy? All right, here we go, right there. That's our box for the month. What do we have in here? Well, we have a chatterbait. Check it out. Nice little chatterbait. Works real good. We have a, basically just a jig. Pretty cool little jig right there. We have the vial bug. This could be used Texas rigged, or you could use it as a trailer on the chatterbait. So that's good. We have a pack of hooks, nice. We have a little drop shot toy, Somatis Baits. I don't know much about it, but I did bring a little drop shot rod, and uh, that's liable to catch some fish as well. Check this out, guys. Little Lucky Craft crankbait, little bluegill color. Pretty sweet. And last but not least, the original Lucky John crankbait, little shad crankbait. So, what are we going to start with? What are we going to start with? I'm going to say we're going to start with a chatterbait. I love a chatterbait. I love a chatterbait on this pond. What am I going to rig a chatterbait on? I'm going to put a chatterbait on straight braid. It's a 3 8 which is probably the most popular size. I'm just going to tie this on with straight braid. All right. Now, again, like I said, I think you could use this vial bug, Texas rig, flipping, or chatterbait trailer. I'm just going to want to rig that just like that, run the hook right through, come right out the middle pretty juicy that's real juicy guys I kind of like that all right let's get after it again there's not a lot of grass this water's a little dingy but a bait like this that has a lot of vibration can be really good now how am I going to retrieve this chatterbait I pretty much here's the rule of thumb guys here's the rule of treat okay slow to medium retrieve is very important you don't want to burn it real fast I, medium to slow is best. That's when I really seem to get the majority of the bites. Because here's what I'm trying to do with this bait. I'm trying to get this bait near the bottom, okay? Or near grass. Now, if I was throwing this bait out in 20 foot of water, I'm, I'm just not going to probably catch any fish. I want to fish a chatterbait basically in 2 foot out to about 8 foot, okay? That's going to be your most productive depth. And that's what this pond is right here. Slow retrieve. 
I can feel those blades thumping good. If you start hitting grass, just kind of twitch your rod, speed up your retrieve just a little bit. So we're going to have to figure out what adjustments we need to make to get these fish to bite. There's one, there's one. All right, got it. Oh yeah, nice fish. Nice fish. Hey, hey boys! <laughs> oh, woo! Chatter bait. Now where did that bite come from? That bite actually came from the shallow part of this little point. There's a little point right there. So that, that fish came on that. Not a bad one. But they weren't out, normally they were out right out here. There's a little trough and a little shallow spot out there, but it's like a little channel. Normally that's where these fish are. But today, and it's fall, they were on this, this one was on this shallow point. As I was reeling this fish in, another fish blew up over there, or I spooked him, one of the two. That is sweet. Anytime you're pond fishing, you need to try to understand what the depth is doing because that's going to dictate where the fish are. So one, one easy way is to count your bait down. So I'm going to throw my bait out there. I'm watching my line and I'm going to wait for it to hit the, bo hit the bottom. It's about a six count, seven count. It just hit the bottom on seven, a count of about six or seven. So I know that it's only five or six feet deep right there. A worm is another really good way of knowing how deep it is. You can throw it out there and watch it fall, watch your slack, count it down. Understand what your fall rate is on your bait, right? You know, if, it, if your worm's falling one foot a second, then if it falls, you know, in five, five seconds, it's five foot deep. What to throw now? Let's try this Lucky Craft crankbait. Oh yeah, a little bluegill color. Now what am I going to rig this on? I'm going to rig this on fluorocarbon from 12 to 20 pound line. This is 15 right here works good in shallower water okay it's a real shallow point right out here and I'm gonna to want to throw a little bit heavier line you can tell that it's gonna be a little shallower because obviously the, the the mud right here goes out a little bit farther so you know that there's somewhat of a point shooting out that way There's one, there's one. Perfect. Well, what I did on that, guys, it was shallow out there. Okay, I held my rod tip high. Okay, I didn't crank it down. I held it high, which is gonna allow that bait not only to, to run a little higher in the water column, I can reel it a little bit slower as well so it doesn't get stuck down in that grass. That was cool. And that's where the fish are. Again, we made a bunch of casts right here on this deeper side of this point. Nothing. Those fish are wadded up right there on that shallow little bar. And again, in the fall, that is important. Bye. All right, what am I going to put this jig on? In this color water here, you know, I think you could, you could get away with just about anything because it's not clear by any means. So I'm going to put it on braid just because I'm going to swim this jig some. Uh, a lot of times when I'm swimming a jig, I like braid. It's got a nice little weed guard. Very, very important to spread this thing apart. See how narrow it is right there? You don't want it that narrow because it'll fold over on the point of the hook. Okay, if it folds over on the point of the hook, you're not going to have a good hookup ratio. See how I spread it out? That's going to allow that to pop off of there just a little bit easier. As that fish's mouth closes in on that, it's going to pop it out, okay? So that's tied on with a standard Palomar knot. I like a Palomar knot for just about everything. This is fun, isn't it? I tell you, I don't get a chance to go pond fishing that often. But it's nice just to detune. It's nice to detune from all the stuff that's going on in the world. 
election stuff and bass tournament stuff and which tour to fish and all the all the craziness so it's kind of kind of nice to just come out here and hang out with you guys all right so there's your jig now we need to put a trailer on it and what i'm going to use i'm going to use the valve crawl again now let me show you something on the back of this valve crawl it's connected right there okay i personally like to always disconnect that that gives those legs independent action okay so it's going to swim a little bit better i'm just going to thread this on there there we go perfect good colors you know, they did a good job on picking the right colors for these baits because again this valve crawl you could texas rig it you can put it on the back of a chatterbait obviously and then like we've done uh, right here we've just put it on the back of a jig as a trailer so perfect really to be honest with you all right let's go see if we can catch one jig you can fish it a couple different ways obviously you can fish it on the bottom or you can swim it because there's a lot of moss in this lake I think I'm going to have to swim it for the most part. I think if I let it sink down to the bottom and get down in that moss, it's going to get really hung up. Swim it naturally through the water. Let these feet do a lot of, a lot of kicking, a lot of action. I'm trying a couple different retrieves here deeper over here so I'm letting it sink down kind of hopping it up like a crawdad popping up out of the mud this little corner right here wind blowing in on it oh yeah there's one got him got him <clears throat> how about that ha I saw him coming in the mud right there swimming right up behind it he bit it I let him eat it for a second and then set the hook if you notice the difference in that hook set versus a chatterbait okay not a big one but nevertheless it's a bite okay <laughs> that's cool Got it. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's good stuff right there. They are really stacked on it. And I fished this pond a bunch. And I've actually never caught them that good on this little shallow point right here. Typically, it's got a lot of grass on it, so you can't really fish through it unless you throw a frog. there pretty cool very cool they are stacked right there all right buddy see you later man all right let's try the drop shot I am not super confident with this little bait right here this would be definitely for clear water okay if this had grass in it like it normally does and very clear this bait right here would be dynamite but we do know where the fish are let's see if we can't um, get one to bite we'll try it out got about a 14 inch liter straight shank hook I'm just gonna because it's a little mossy I'm gonna Texas rig it okay good and straight very important you don't want this bait all crooked you want everything very, very straight. Because as you pull that through the water, you want it to go straight and glide. You don't want it to twirl through the water. If it twirls through the water, then you've got something rigged wrong. So you always got to keep checking your drop shot. Pull it through the water by the boat. Pull it through the water by, your, by the lake you're fishing, pond or whatever. And make sure that it's running straight. You want it to look very natural. Again, I tell you, it, this is a typical fall pattern. This lake, this little pond right here, is really proving itself to be a fall pattern. That's a shallow little bar that runs out that way. So now I know that it drops off at this angle here. So I'm gonna throw it right out there. I'm gonna keep my rod tip up. I'm just gonna shake it along. There's one right there. Got him. Well, that didn't take long.
They are stacked right there, guys. They are stacked right there. That is so cool. That's a nice little bait. First cast. Another thing that happens in the fall is that fish will school up, okay? They'll wad up eating on bait. This is the time of year they want to feed, 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 because winter's coming. So a lot of times when you're fishing around a pond, you might not catch anything, right? You're going around, nothing, 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 nothing. Boom, you start catching them. The majority of the fish are going to be in these bigger schools like this. And that's what this spot's proven right here. This little shallow point again, I keep talking about it. There's a wad of fish right there feeding on bait. And I fished over here where I normally catch them and around the other side, nothing. So if you're not getting bit in the fall, keep moving until you find them. And you can have some of the best days of fishing ever when you finally get them. All right, dude. See you, man. Cool, cool, cool. Well, thanks, Mr. Taco Box, for allowing me to have a, a good little morning. A little detune. A little detune. So guys, that's it, okay? Mystery Tackle Box, awesome value, awesome lures. I showed you a couple ways to fish them. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out Mystery Tackle Box at the link down below. Each month you're gonna get this box full of cool stuff. So thanks for watching, guys. I think I'm gonna still go fishing though. We'll see ya.